Now, I suppose Utah banks or life insurance isn't as exciting as Las Vegas, but to Yesco, each and every sign was newsworthy. And a classic to strike at the competition, Beneficial Life even wrote a fan letter saying that they are well pleased with the effectiveness of the lighting on our corner. And more and more corners were being lighted by Yesco by 1970, and more and more corners were being turned as a corporation. Yesco had survived a depression, shortages during the war, and prospered with new markets in its first 50 years, a milestone observed in 1970. Thomas Young Sr. had seen his dream come true before he died a year later in 1971. A faith-driven man, a businessman, and always an artist. Tom Young Jr. would become president of Yesco. His work ethic immediately impressed the employees during the transition to Tom Jr.'s leadership. I fell in love with with Tom and his father and the company the minute I was um, the minute I came on board and he was more like a brother to me than a than a boss I always admired him he 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 is not an elitist man he is was he is willing to do uh, anything and everything to make the thing go right his knowledge of the people his caring for them his knowledge of their names. I have great respect for my father, and the older I get, the more I respect. I've, I've learned to respect the things he's done and accomplished. He's, his leadership is not a real hard line, this is, let's do this my way at all. He is very much um, working through uh, other people and other people's um, efforts. There was every indication now that Yesco would be around another 50 years. It went from being kind of a ma and pa type company, and in the 70s and 80s, it seems like it really ratcheted up with the expertise and ability of the people that were working here. I think f between uh, early 70s and by the time the 80s were over, we probably were selling 12 times more than uh, we were uh, uh, back in the before the 70s. And so it was just a time of tremendous growth and expanding, uh, expanding geographically and uh, seeing great success with the company. Las Vegas continued to be a big reason for growth. Oh no, this was only the start. We were still a decade away from the super mega signs that are still being eclipsed every year. There was never so much neon that there couldn't have been more. Now again, Tom Jr. knew Las Vegas was exciting, but there was far more to the Intermountain West. Before that, I think selling was kind of, you get in the car and you drive south and see what you can drum up, you know. But it became scientific in the 80s and 90s, and still is. There was a charisma about all of that in the company being involved in sales and the production of advertising displays. It was, it was magic. New stores meant new accounts. And while Vegas had Vegas Vic, Utah had the D-Burger Clown. Let's go to D's, let's all go to D's. Came up with an idea of having a clown that would get the attention of the children in the family. The clown became a clown with a plastic belly that came out. And then there had an attraction panel at the bottom. Those were so great. The downside was when you went to service the lamps inside, it was nearly 150 degrees inside that belly when the sun was out. Again, it was part of the West, and it was more than a sign. In the late 1980s, a then new Yesco president said it was part of our culture. These has been a great customer of ours for years, and uh, the clown is, is a part of all of our lives, and, and we, we don't have the heart to throw them away. Well, a young reporter agreed. But the culture of Salt Lake City will always be reflected in the good old D-Burger clown. His broken ear, oh, and here's part of his eye. It was just a beautiful design. 
beautifully executed. It had shape, it had radiuses, it had balloons, it had movement, color. It just, it was a home run. They were always signs of the times. Sure, the signs changed, just as generations of family leadership changed. But like Tom Jr. learned from Thomas Young, Michael Young had learned from Tom Jr. The thing that I remember was you work for the company. The company does not work for you. Mike has told me on a number of occasions, I want to do what Tom does. I want to do the HR for ESCO. I want to be the person that builds the company to hand it off to the next generation. They knew what their grandfather would have wanted and their father, and so um, they never skipped a beat. They knew. And I think the last thing they, any of the third generation wanted to do was disappoint the first or second generation. It wasn't just your first day at Yesco. Oh, each generation remembered its first big sign at Yesco. For Michael, it was watching the company make the Sahara Casino sign. And the sign itself was 222 feet, six inches tall. And I remember the, remember the dimensions. And it was, it was a very large display that had the word Sahara written vertically on the sign. It really was the same passion as Thomas Young had, a need to satisfy a curiosity. It was how can you build a cutting edge electric sign and make it the best. However, that cutting edge was sharper and sharper, such as how do you cover the sky? All those Yesco signs on Fremont Street would now be under the Fremont experience. No longer would just the front of a building be a sign or the roof of a building, but the sky would be electric. And no longer would a sign just glow or blink or rock back and forth. It would be like a giant television or kind of a cinerama on a stick. And not only would it cover a block, but in one case, Yesco would cover a city. It was during the 2002 Winter Olympics. We're not aware of anything that large scale anywhere. I mean, there was the equivalent of 745 billboards, so 500,000 square feet of graphics on the buildings downtown. Can you imagine this? All of this for a period of a couple of weeks, but probably never before had as many people in the world ever saw a Yesco sign at the same time. I think viewership of the 2002 Salt Lake Olympic Games was over three billion. Oh, and the Olympic rings on the hill? Now that kind of had Jeff Young a bit nervous. You see, there really wasn't any time to rehearse. I, along with my coworker, Kirk Kessler, actually flipped the switch to turn the rings on for the games. Glad they worked. They did work just as Ben Jones's Boulder Club sign worked, just as Wendover Will worked, just as well about every other thing worked, whether the signs were blowing in a cold winter wind or seemingly basking in the warm breeze surrounded by palm trees, they changed American landscapes. With Yesco, you learn early. If you're gonna be successful, there's no such thing as an impossible sign. That is exactly what we do. When I drive in, from Salt Lake or, or, or from the east, coming into the, the valley, especially at nighttime, that brings a, a real sense of pride to me. You, when you look and you can see the glow of Las Vegas, it just, wow, look at that. They are in awe of the new signs. It's because they were in awe of the old signs. Lisa Adams has designed signs since 1983 and she's loved signs since an early age. My parents used to take us uh, when I was small and we'd go up and down the strips and look at the lighting on the different casino facades and I just never could imagine that I'd ever be in this field as I got older. Well, we never imagined when it began that it was gonna go to the size and to the scale it did. Once the technology was there, the budgets for the casinos was always there and the appetite for bigger 
in Las Vegas. That's how Las Vegas lives. Benjamin Jones engineers today's massive signs, just as his grandfather did those old signs. Well, he does have a computer that Ben Sr. did not have, but he mostly admires his grandfather's drawings. I think I was always impressed mostly with his ability to draw a solution rather than calculate a solution. I enjoyed the fact that he could visualize how a structure should look, should act, how strong it would be. You see, something magical happens when it comes to a sign. In the midst of mega signs, something as simple as an eight decade old Rio Grande sign over a rail station needs some tender loving care. The city rallies around having Yesco fix it up to burn not as a new example of electronic tech, but as a replica of a simple past. And the thing that amazes me is that we use pretty much the same methods of uh, building it in the shop. You know, there's a little automation out there, but in the main, that sign was rebuilt pretty much the way it was built the first time. That's why Yesco has survived as a company when so many others have not. You admire the past, you appreciate the present, and you look forward to coming to work in the future. It's the keystone of the success of the organization moving into the future. If we don't have those family values, then everything else around it will crumble. So it is, it is paramount. The history of the good companies are few and far between that have allowed their people to do what they do and to do it to the best of their ability and provided the environment and the finance and the facilities and the personnel to be able to accomplish that. We never missed a payroll. We've never missed a payroll in a hundred years. 80 years ago, that meant you got your $50 paycheck, oh minus your 50 cent social security, and minus $12 if you bought a piano from the company. Yes, a piano, all part of working for Yesco. Yesco, over 100 years in the making.